You want to learn something, but where do you start? Do you schlep through all the YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram videos? What about enrolling in a school or an online course? Perhaps you could hire a coach. There are so many questions. The answers you get depend heavily on your purpose or your what and why, which leads to the questions you ask. But are you asking the right questions? Hey, welcome to the Monique on the Mic podcast. I'm your host, Monique B. Thomas. This show is your go-to resource for professional and aspiring singers. Every Monday, join me for a mix of solo episodes and insightful interviews where I share real artist stories, practical strategies, and mindset shifts. Whether you're just starting out or are already on your journey, you'll find the tools you need to transform your vocal path and feel supported. I keep it real, I keep it fun, and it's always useful and up to date. Let's get into it. Today's opening might seem a bit vague, but it's done on purpose. It's to prove a point. You see, we singers often spin in circles because we lack clarity. But this episode is not only for singers, it's for anyone who's ever wanted to learn something or become something. Just the other day, I had a student I hadn't seen in a while come in for a private session. Usually these sessions are voice lessons, but I offer other services such as studio preparation, editing your original compositions, choosing your repertoire, and so much more. I asked what it is that they'd like to work on, and the student rambled for about 10 minutes. In that 10 minutes, I realized that there are at least 10 things I could help them with, but we only had an hour. I finally asked them, what is it that you'd like me to help you with today? This one question required them to prioritize and get clear about what they wanted to do, or rather, where it is they're trying to go with their artistry. My favorite thing to do when coaching a student is to start with your end desired result and work backwards. So in other words, you want to do or become X. What is the requirement? Meaning, what skills do I need? What kind of person do I have to be in order to do that thing? So let's imagine that you want to become a pastry chef. Yummy. Well, the average person knows that a pastry chef makes, well, pastries. But what else do you know about what it means to be a pastry chef? How would you go about finding out exactly what a pastry chef does and what a person has to do to become one? You can't just content yourself with the idea that a pastry chef makes delicious cakes. If you do, You run the risk of being disappointed when you realize that a pastry chef is really a chemist making edible art, has grueling hours, and must be good at math. I'm certainly missing a lot of details, but you get the point. If you just say you want to be a pastry chef and you don't realize you have to be good at math and you hate math, then you're headed down the wrong path. What I'm getting at is that you must get clear on what it is you want and why, but in order to do so, you'll have to do some research. This research will clarify and confirm what you want or do not want. It will help you to ask the right questions so that you can get appropriate answers. This is really what learning is all about, asking the right questions so you can get the best answers. But there's more. Once you've figured out what you want to do, you'll need to build a basic foundation. This is true no matter what you are learning. But you can't just start anywhere because there is a sequence to learning that leads to a strong foundation. The other day, I did a trial of a Lindy Hop class for complete beginners. While I've managed to pick up a few steps here and there, I haven't studied Lindy Hop in a regular class. So this class was actually easy for me because I sing swing music. I've done other couples dances like salsa, bachata, and kisamba, and apparently I have a gift for dancing. I'm not bragging. It is what I'm told every time I learn a new dance. I then proceeded to try class level two, which was a bit more difficult, but still rather easy to me. Next, I did the third class and I had finally hit the plateau of how far my raw talent would take me. You see, we got to one of the basic steps, the Charleston, which is still a bit awkward for me. And it was part of that day's mini couples choreography. I had to stop because my lack of basic knowledge of that step meant I would penalize my dance partner. What I did instead was left the group for a few minutes to rehearse that step until it was stable enough to be included in a dance routine. Make no mistake, 
I know I'll need to work the step thoroughly before next week's class, or I'll get left behind because the step is part of the foundation I should have learned in year one. What this taught me is just how important the basics are. You cannot gloss over them and then expect to be advanced in what you're doing. The other thing it taught me is that talent is no match for solid basics, and so people with less talent but more skill will quickly pass you by, and if you try to do things out of sequence, you'll always be sent back to the basics. Here's why. Advanced technique is simply basic technique, but under pressure. So what that means, as it pertains to singing, is you get your voice nice and even, and then that evenness has to hold up when you're singing extremely fast or slow, extremely loud or soft, in foreign languages, a cappella, with fewer instruments, while dancing, etc., etc. You're not actually learning anything new. It's just done with a greater degree of finesse while under pressure. So I couldn't do the Charleston fast in a routine simply because I couldn't even do the Charleston at a medium to slow tempo gracefully. Now I did manage to muddle through the routine because I'm musical and I can manage to get my feet quickly on the right beats even though I kept messing up. But it was clumsy and unpolished. That is to be expected because I haven't spent enough time dancing, learning the basics, and working out the knots. So here's what I want you to do the next time you want to do or be something. I want you to research what skills and personality traits are required, ask yourself if you already possess some of those skills, and decide if you're willing to work on those areas that are a bit underdeveloped. If you're still on board, commit yourself to doing the work in the right order so that you don't miss out on perfecting the basics. From time to time, do an assessment to see how things are coming along. Oh, and here's another thing. If you remember my birthday episode, number 33, I spoke about focusing on two things, patience and grace. I want you to be patient with yourself because learning something new is hard, requires change, and takes time. And I want you to give yourself grace for the ugly stages you will go through. What does that look like for me? Well, I've only danced Lindy Hop a handful of times, and while my musicianship skills help me greatly to self-correct, my movements aren't yet smooth, even though I'm in time. I'm not going to expect that to change for a while because I have to put in time on the dance floor. I'll try to learn something from every partner with whom I dance, and I'll try to be lighthearted about it because dancing is supposed to be fun. If you take this attitude into whatever you're learning, not only will you learn more and faster, the whole thing will be more enjoyable even during the ugly stages. Oh, and by the way, there's one more thing about learning that you need to know. Doing the work always generates more questions, leading to deeper understanding because the new information has to peacefully and meaningfully coexist with the old information. When there is an anomaly, there's a question. When I give students work and they never come in with questions or any good questions, I know they haven't done the work. It means the new info hasn't entered the space where the old info is, and so they're operating on the old. No questions. This means no advancement possible. So do the work, ask lots of good questions, and make sure you understand the answers. If you've enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're really liking what I'm throwing down, you'll love my Mic Masters newsletter. For more information on how to work with me and to sign up for the newsletter, visit www.uniquebthomas.com or check the show notes. Musically, Monique.